In 1992, two countries with a thousand-year history finally became independent from each other. The Czech Republic and Slovakia gained independence and the opportunity to develop in their own ways. Who and why united these countries? What oppressions did both nations experience in this union? And how did they manage to eventually separate in such a peaceful manner? How did Czechoslovakia begin? Two completely different nations with different languages had only one common factor, the border. It was the shared border that made them inseparable, first during the medieval period and later as part of Austro-Hungarian Empire. 1918 was a crucial year and Ukraine played a role in it. At the beginning of the 20th century, when the Austro-Hungarian Empire was under pressure from the international conflicts of World War I, Czechs and Slovaks, who were parts of this empire, started forming national movements with the goal of obtaining independence. In May 1970, the Czechoslovak National Council was established in Kiev. Uh, it was a self-government and representation body for the Czechoslovak community. This council acted as an intermediate step towards the formation of an independent Czechoslovak state. The Czechoslovak National Council gathered representatives of the Czechs and Slovaks uh, residing in Kiev, as well as refugees from Galicia and Bukovina. Its leader was Tomil Karik Masaryk, a permanent Czech nationalist. The main objective of the Council was the create of United Czechoslovak Army that could fight against the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Within its powers, the Czechoslovak National Council conducted political negotiations with governments of the other countries and sought support from the Czechoslovak National Movement. Soon after, events uh, unfolded that contributed to the creation of an independent Czechoslovak state. In October 1918, the Austrian Imperial Charles I, hoping to preserve his empire, issued a manifesto uh, granting the Czechs and Slovaks the right to self-determination. Charles' motives were complex, as um, he ultimately hoped to save his empire somehow, but he didn't achieve the expected success. However, the manifesto of the Austrian Empire Charles I paved the way for the declaration of independence of Czechoslovakia. As a result, on October 28, 1918, the independence of Czechoslovakia was proclaimed in Prague. After the proclamation of independence, the Czechoslovak National Council in Kiev fulfilled its mission. Its members joined the formation of the new state, engaged in political processes and fought for recognition by the international community. The establishment of the Czechoslovak National Council in Kiev in 1970 played a significant role in the progress of forming an independent Czechoslovak state. This step contributed to the unity of Czechs and Slovaks and had political significance by helping to create a legitimate structure representing the interests of the Czechs and Slovak peoples. Unequal but together, the newly formed state faced a range of problems, economic and political challenges due to the global stagnation against the backdrop of the First World War. The Czechs had imperial ambitions and sought to realize them, including through Slovakia. However, we must remember that Czechia had a thousand-year history as the Kingdom of Bohemia. While the Slovaks did not have such a history and were economically and socially weaker, therefore it is evident that they didn't have a dominant role in these relations. Nevertheless, Slovak nationalists continued to fight for equality in the partnership. Their claims concerned the uneven representation of Slovaks in the political structures of Czechoslovakia. The Czech majority had the advantage in decision-making and controlled key positions in the state administration, uh, while the Slovaks were less represented. 
Consequently, economic development in Czechoslovakia was uneven, favoring Czech uh, regions. Czech culture dominated, while Slovak language and uh, traditions were suppressed. Slovak nationalists had legitimate grievances against the Czech majority in Czechoslovakia. Dissatisfaction grew, and the Czechs also put forth counterclaims. They didn't want to economically support underdeveloped Slovak regions and didn't want to reduce the use of their own language and so on. The Czechs aimed for development, social education and industrial. The Slovaks were comfortable remaining uh, predominantly rural with a high uh, percentage of religious population. Clearly, two nations in one country faced challenges. In 1939, the Nazi regime in Germany ended their coexistence. Obviously, it was not for the better nor for long. World War II on opposite sides of the barricades. On March 14, 1939, Slovakia declared its independence in alliance with Germany. The Slovak government, led by Prime Minister Joseph Tiso, established uh, an authoritarian regime aimed at supporting Nazi policies. In the early years of the war, Slovakia played a limited role in the fighting. Basically, she sent small contingents of soldiers to the Eastern Front against the USSR. However, over time, the Slovak government began to change its policy. This was due to growing dissatisfaction with the uh, military conditions and Nazi control. In 1944, rebellion against the Nazi regime erupted in Slovakia, known as uh, the Slovak National Uprising. The uprising was led by anti-fascist forces, uh, including communists, uh, socialists and democratic groups. It was aimed at overthrowing the Nazi regime and establishing a democratic Slovakia. However, the rebellion was suppressed by German forces after two months of fighting. Following the uprising, the Germans organized a direct occupation of Slovakia. The country remained part of the Axis until the end of the war. After the war, collaborationist leaders of Slovakia were executed or sentenced for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Therefore, also formally Slovakia was part of the Axis. In practice, a significant portion of its population fought against the Nazis, just like the Czechs. Czechia's experience in the war. Bohemia once again during World War II. Czechia was occupied by Nazi Germany and was declared an independent state called the Protectorates of Bohemia and Moravia. However, there was no real independence. The Protectorates of Bohemia and Moravia was subordinate uh, to the Nazi regime and controlled by Germany. The government of the Protectorate was led by Konstantin von Neurath, uh, who was appointed as the Reich Protector. The authority was fully subordinated to the Nazi regime. The government pursued a policy aimed at national assimilation and repression against the Czech population. The Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia became a site of economic exploitation by German companies and military problems. Czechs were forced to perform uh, forced labor for the benefits of the Nazi war machine. A significant portion of the Czech population actively resisted the Nazi regime and joined with the resistance. One of the most notable examples of resistance was the uprising Morinets in 1945, when Czech partisans and soldiers confronted Nazi forces. During World War II, Czechia suffered significant losses, both human and material. The German occupation and the regime of the Protectorate uh, left memories of oppression and terror uh, that lasted until Czechia's liberation. After the Nazis, the Communists came to power. After the victory in World War II, the Soviet Union wanted to have both countries in its camp. 
So the Slovaks and Czechs faced reunification again, whether they wanted it or not. Both countries were too weak and uh, devastated after the war to resist such a strong ally as the USSR. However, the attitude towards the Soviets in their two countries was somewhat different. Czechia was liberated not only by the Soviets, but also by the Allies, so they had something to compare to. The Slovaks, on the other hand, only saw Soviet soldiers, and no matter how cruel they might have been, they remembered them as their Slavic brothers. At the beginning of the new coexistence, equality between Czechs and Slovaks was declared. Until 1948, Czechoslovakia remained the only state in Eastern Europe that formally didn't belong to a communist government. However, this could not last long. Triumphanta February. At the beginning of 1948, Czechoslovakia was a parliamentary democracy with a government representing various political parties, including the communists. However, the Communist Party was the most organized and had significant influence in society. The Soviets desired unquestionable influence in this region. Therefore, soon the democratic government and parliamentary democracy of Czechoslovakia ceased to exist. The Czechoslovak Coup of 1948, also known as the Victorious February, was a political coup organized by the Communist Party, which placed its supporters in key positions within the government and military. These events led to a change in power in the country and the establishment of a communist regime that lasted until 1989. On February 25, 1948, under pressure from the Communist Party, Communist President Clement Gottwald made the decision to dismiss non-communist ministers. This decision sparked mass protests and dissent among the citizens, but the Communist Party had significant control over the media and military forces. The Czechoslovak government, under the threats of force, submitted to the Communist forces. After the coup, the Communists entered the government and the country began the transition to a communist regime. Massive repressions were carried out against dissenting citizens. There were restrictions on freedom of speech and human rights. Many political opponents have been imprisoned or forced to flee the country. The Communist Party established the dictatorship of the proletariat. The party initiated the collectivization of uh, agriculture, the nationalization of industry and other major sectors of the economy. Power was concentrated in the hands of the Communist Party and its leader, Joseph Stalin, in the USSR, was the main external sponsor of the Communist regime. Czechoslovakia became one of the spheres of influence of the Soviet Union and joined the Socialist bloc under the leadership of the USSR. For the next decades, the communist regime prevailed in Czechoslovakia, causing uh, disappointment and opposition among a portion of the population. Protest movements grew until they culminated some in the Prague Spring in 1968. And spring again. The Prague Spring was a period of political and social reforms that took place in Czechoslovakia in 1968. During this period, there was hope for socialism with a human face and a desire for greater political freedom and self-governance. The beginning of the Prague Spring was associated with the election of a new leader of the Czechoslovak Communist Party, Alexander Dubček, who adopted a reform program. These reforms encompassed uh, political, economic and social aspects of the country's life. One of the key aspects of the Prague Spring was the intention to replace the uh, centralized system of government with a more democratic form of socialism.
This included the introduction of elements of self-government and uh, greater autonomy um, for regions and enterprises. Guarantees for civil liberties were introduced, such as freedom of speech, the press, and a fair trial. During the Prague Spring, there were also attempts to change the attitude toward cultural and political heritage. However, the Prague Spring faced significant opposition from conservative elements within the Soviet bloc. Of course, the Soviet Union couldn't remain indifferent since democracy uh, in the control of regions meant losing control over them. Suppression of freedom. In August 1968, the Soviet Union, along with other Warsaw Pact countries, invaded Czechoslovakia in order to suppress the reform movement. During the invasion by the Warsaw Pact forces, Czechoslovak reformers and citizens protested against this violence. But they were unable to resist the numerical superiority and strength of the military. The Soviet occupation led to the end of the Prague Spring and the return of the country to a totalitarian regime. After the defeats of the reform movements, repression was carried out against the reformers and sympathizers of the Prague Spring. Purges were conducted within the party and state structures. Leaders of the movement were arrested and imprisoned, and the reforms were reversed. It is worth noting that uh, the suppression of the uprising and uh, the subsequent repression and purges affected Slovakia to a lesser extent than Czechia. This is because the protest sentiments were primarily uh, concentrated in Prague and other cities of Czechia, uh, not Slovakia. This fact may explain Slovakia's current attitude towards Russia, but more on that later. The events of the Prague Spring became a symbol of resistance to authoritarian regimes. Over the next 20 years, Czechs and Slovaks would continue to strive for democracy and freedom. The path would be long because they had to fight not only among themselves, but also against the power dictatorial machine of the Soviets. But uh, the revolution did take place. The Velvet Revolution was a peaceful revolution that took place in Czechoslovakia in late 1989. It led to the end of the communist regime and initiated uh, the process of uh, democratization in the country. The Velvet Revolution began on November 17, 1989 in Prague during a student rally dedicated to the memory of Jan Palak. It was a student who set himself on fire in 1969 in protest against uh, the communist regime. The police brutally dispersed the action, which became the catalyst for mass protests across the country. The name of the revolution uh, was coined by foreign journalists. However, according to uh, Václav Gavel, the newly elected president of Czechoslovakia after the revolution, the name doesn't fully reflect the events of the first days, because the army was prepared for combat and the police did use force against the demonstrators. Václav Gavel played an important role in leading the opposition and uniting various democratic forces. He was a prominent Czech playwright, writer and a public figure who opposed the communist regime. Protests grew and the people demanded political and social changes. The main demands were the ends of the communist regime, freedom of speech, the right to free elections and democratic reforms. Thousands of people took to the streets, went on strikes, organized peaceful demonstrations and hunger strikes. The Velvet Revolution reached a turning point on December 10, 1989, when the communist regime was forced to enter into dialogue with the opposition. As a result of the negotiations, an agreement was reached on elections to the uh, Czechoslovak uh, parliament. 
protests and demonstrations throughout the country against the communist regime quickly spread to Slovakia as well. Students and intellectuals played a significant role in actively opposing the regime and demanding political reforms. Vladimir Mechiar, a politician and member of the Christian Democratic Movement, played an important role in the Velvet Revolution in Slovakia. In the early 1970s, Mechiar was expelled from the Communist Party. Later, he was even listed as an enemy of socialism due to his opposition to the communist regime. Vladimir Mechiar gained popularity among the Slovak population during the Velvet Revolution. He became one of the prominent figures in the movement for democracy and independence in Slovakia. However, his political career would take a different turn in the following years. After the Velvet Revolution and the fall of communism, Czechoslovakia transitioned into a democratic state. However, the tension between the Czech and Slovak populations continued to grow. The desire for greater autonomy and self-determination led to negotiations between Czech and Slovak political leaders, resulting in the formation of the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic as separate nations on January 1, 1993. Vladimir Mechiar played a crucial role in the establishment of an independent Slovakia. He became the first prime minister of Slovakia and served multiple terms throughout the 1990s. However, his leadership style and policies were controversial, and his government was criticized for its authoritarian tendencies and the erosion of democratic institutions. During his time in power, Mechiar concentrated significant authority in his hands, leading to concentration of power within the executive branch. His government faced accusations of limiting freedom of the press, interfering with the judiciary and engaging in corrupt uh, practices. These actions raised concerns both domestically and internationally about the state of democracy in Slovakia. Mechiar's policies and leadership style further deepened the divide among the Slovak population, while someone supported his nationalist approach and emphasized Slovak independence, others criticized his authoritarian tendencies and called for greater democratic reforms. In 1998, Mechiar's party, the Movement for Democratic Slovakia, HZDS, failed to secure a majority in parliamentary elections. This marked the end of Mechiar's premiership, as a coalition government was formed without his party's participation. The new government embarked on a path of democratic reforms and worked towards improving Slovakia's international reputation. Since then, Slovakia has made significant progress in strengthening democratic institutions, ensuring the rule of law and promoting human rights. The country became a member of the European Union in 2004 and joined NATO in 2004 as well. These integrations have uh, provided a framework for Slovakia's continued development as a democratic and prosperous nation. As a result of political and constitutional negotiations between representatives of the Czech Republic and Slovakia, it was decided to divide Czechoslovakia into two independent countries. On January 1, 1993, the separation took place and Czechia and Slovakia declared their independence. After the dissolution of Czechoslovakia in 1993, Slovakia underwent significant changes in its political and economic development, although not as Western-oriented as Czechia. The country's leader, Vladimir Mechia, became a de facto dictator, which led to Slovakia being referred to as Belarus on the Danube for a while, comparing Mechia to Lukashenko. Accusation of corruption, economic crimes, and even the kidnapping of the son of a political opponent made Mechiar and, to some extent, Slovakia political pariahs. There was a favorable attitude towards Russia and the 
appointments of uh, graduates um, from the Moscow State Institute of International Relations to key positions, half of whom are known worldwide as KGB agents. Russian religious propaganda also had and still has a significant influence and successfully convincing Slovaks that the West is spiritually empty and only Russia is capable of preserving traditional family values. On the other hand, Czechia focused on improving education and didn't have such an influence. Unfortunately, in the energy sector, Slovakia has remained dependent on natural gas supplies from the Russian Federation. Russia has been a key gas supplier to Slovakia. Therefore, the energy sector has an impact on the political relations between the two countries. Later, after the choosing the new leader, the country took a different path and joined the European Union and NATO in 2004, strengthening its political status and ensuring the country's security. The Czech Republic in the early years of the independence, the country faced economic difficulties and the transition to a market economy proved to be challenging. However, a path was chosen that moved away from Moscow. Privatization of state property and reforms were accompanied by social tensions, mass unemployment and growing inequality. Nevertheless, during the 1990s, the Czech economy gradually achieved stable growth. Russia sought to maintain its influence in the region and take advantage of the political and economic instability in the post-Soviet countries. However, the Czech Republic actively supported its independence. The country turned to Western Europe and NATO for support in its democratic transformation and integration into European structures. Of course, Russia also tried to leverage its energy resources, including natural gas supplies, to maintain influence in the region, directly threatening to cut off gas supplies to Czechia, as hinted by the Russian ambassador in Czechia. Then President Václav Gavel responded that the Russian gentlemen could keep their gas, and Czechia was heading to NATO. Thus, Czechia became a member of NATO in 1999 and received support from other member countries regarding its security and stability. After the dissolution of Czechoslovakia, Czechia implemented a series of reforms in various areas aimed at creating a stable economy and consolidating democratic institutions. Fighting corruption became one of the priorities for Czechia after the dissolution of Czechoslovakia. Laws were passed and special anti-corruption bodies were established to investigate corruption cases and hold uh, the guilty accountable. Furthermore, Czech Republic actively cooperates with the international organizations such as the European Commission and the Council of Europe to support anti-corruption efforts and exchange experiences with the countries. Contemporary times. So today we observe an interesting paradox. Countries present themselves as diverse as possible. The pro-Western president of the Czech Republic, Mr. Pavel, uh, with the support of Czech society, leads the country towards the development of democracy, respect for rights and freedoms, and equality education. The country and the society unequivocally support Ukraine in an unfair war initiated by Russia. On the other hand, President Zuzana Chaputova and the government of Slovakia support Ukraine and European values almost against a uh, uh, predominantly pro-Russian society. Soon, pro-Russian and anti-European leaders may come to power in Slovakia, which, according to President Zuzana Chaputova, may make the country politically dependent on Hungary. This will further divide Czech Republic and Slovakia. However, we already know that the success of these countries lies not in unity or division, but in choosing the right path.